Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel this week. This week's episode is pretty interesting to me. I've been wanting to try this camera for a long time and I was finally able to do it with Fujifilm's help. They let me borrow the uh, GFX 50R and the 32 to 64. And I've had a great time using it, but you know, I'm really disappointed that this camera is no longer available. But that doesn't mean that it's not available used. There's some great prices on this camera right now. You can find it for around $2,000, $2,100, something like that. And you know, the lenses, they're still expensive, unfortunately, but they're still great lenses. You can't go wrong with it. So let's get to it after the break. So this camera right here was introduced in September of 2018, but it was unfortunately discontinued last September, September of 2021. And it was really to make way for the new 50S II, which is a nice camera in itself, and also the, um, the 100S, which is a beautiful camera. These are great cameras, but they're not rangefinder style. They're more like uh, little DSLRs. I hate to say that, but that's what they are. They're like little DSLRs with a giant sensor in it. Um, so this camera, I, I just want to talk a little bit about it before I get to some images, which I had a lot of fun doing. Um, Rangefinder style for me, I'm used to this style. I really like the, the eyepiece on the left-hand side. It really works for me because I'm a right-eye hand right eye shooter, um, but it's really heavy. This combination, I should say, is really heavy. So this camera and lens combination with a 32 to 64 is pretty heavy. It's 3.63 pounds and that's that's a beast and you know carrying on his shoulder they, it does come with a really nice strap and it isn't bad it's comfortable but i have to tell you that you know shooting with this much weight um for me now is is not really what i'm looking forward to and uh it would be much better it, for handheld shooting it's you probably got to put a uh a lens like the uh, 45 which is just a little bit over one pound so your total weight is 2.77 pounds and much easier to use as a handheld camera and when i go out i'm i'm usually not using my my zoom lenses but in comparison <laughs> well i don't know how much of a comparison you can get with this uh this is the xt3 with a 16 to 80 on it and quite honestly it's you know 2.09 09, so a little bit over two pounds, much easier to handle hand, handheld. And I know a lot of you folks shoot handheld, and there's nothing wrong with that. I do it all the time. But uh, with this lens, the zoom lenses that come with the, the uh, G mount are really honestly for a tripod. So let's get on to some images here. So here we are over at this lobster buoy place over in Bayview. And it's a really cool photograph. Uh, I, I gotta say, there's so much detail in here, it's incredible. So let's blow this thing up and take a look at it. This is up to 200%. Look at the detail in this image. Holy mackerel, at 200%. It's really something. Uh, you know, the, the time of day wasn't great because the shadows are straight down, basically. But I should would have liked to have gone over there at a different time, but I didn't have that, didn't have that ability to do that. So. Um, and I uh, knocked out the background a little bit. I think I shot this at like 5.6 or something. Let's see what I shot this at. I shot it at f8, which is the depth of field of like 5.6. So pretty cool. Now let's look at it in black and white. Same thing. It's just, it's, a, it's so full of detail, it's amazing. I can't wait to make large blow-ups of this image. It's great. So let's go over to, this is... These are images that I shot over where I normally do over in the back of uh, Bearskin Neck and Rockport. And uh, let's take a look at this shot here. Same thing. Amazing detail. 200%. Look at all these shells here. All really sharp. Oh, you know, I guess what else would you expect out of a, you know, a, uh, a, a medium format sensor? Pretty amazing stuff. I can't wait to make a, a large blow up of this. Probably 20 by 30, 16 by 24, something like that. It'll be great. 
And then moving over to the door here, did the same thing. This door is, <laughs> the guy changes it every year. So every year there's something different. And I've gotten some great images out of this. I mean, look how, look at, look at the detail in this netting here. Really amazing to me. Wow, pretty cool. So I also did some shots uh, around the local yacht club and I converted this one to black and white. Uh, I like this one and I got, I've shot this image before, but I kind of like it with the, uh, with this camera and lens combination. And I purposely shot this at F4 so that the background disappeared. Well, maybe I did, maybe it was five, six, whoops. Let me see. No, I shot this at F11, uh, depth of field like F8. Uh, you can see how it drops off along the top here. It's still loading. Come on, you can do it. All right, so it starts to drop off at the top, actually. So when you get real close, depth of field when you get close, it starts to drop off. Next shot, here are these chairs. Same thing. Uh, it starts to drop off right about where this chair ends. Now, that's the other thing you have to understand about shooting with... with these large format uh, cameras is the depth of field is a lot less. But really, really, I just the detail is unbelievable. Okay, so let's go to these foggy day images and we're gonna work through them. Um, I, I, you know, I've got a little video that goes along with it and I'll uh, intersperse some comments with those images instead of recording this screen here. Um, I think you'll like it much better that way. So here I am down here in Rockport Harbor. And let me tell you, it is chilly and foggy. And I can't wait to get some shots with this, this big old beast right here. The old GFX 50R. It's going to be a lot of fun. Can't wait. It's also pretty windy here, so you might get some wind noise. What I really like about this camera is the incredible smoothness of the background. The depth of field, just as it just goes out, it goes out in an incredibly smooth way. Nice easterly wind is bringing in the fog, and it's just darn chilly out. What caught my eye here was this uh, white boat with the yellow seats and uh, yeah, a, foot, a little slightly out of focus boat in the background. We can get the motif in the background with a vertical shot here, kind of cool. So I can, these leading lines right up to the motif and the fog, oh, it's gonna be great. I love this image here. It's shot at F16 and it is beautiful. It's sharp all the way through to that red belt in the background and it just slowly goes out of focus. It's wonderful. I can't wait to make a large print. So you really got some nice shots over here. The fog is still hanging in and it's great. I mean, I just got a great shot of the motif in this red lobster boat. What drew me to this particular shot is the simplicity of it. It's just so calming with that fog the way it is. The great thing is I can blow these up to an enormous size with this camera being a 50 megapixel camera. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't, I can't wait to get started on the images. So we've got some good shots that include dinghies, fog, motif, just stuff that you don't find every day. That's why I try to get out here with the, uh, when, I, when the fog appears, I try to get out here. It's great. And as usual, when I'm almost done shooting, a bird decides to take off from a dinghy and I get this great shot. So here's uh, the first shot of this tree with the really interesting trunk to it and the Vasithia growing in the background. I try to tone down the background as much as I could to make this a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. And then I decided to go and do 
a shot of just the trunk and I like this shot much better. Um, I could have moved a little bit more to the right so I would have gotten some more of this um, Forsythia in the background over here, but I purposely shot this wide open at F4 because I wanted to get rid of, I wanted to tone down the background. So it's just color and I had to, I had to burn in this over here, the left and the right, uh, just to make, sorry for that noise, um, just so that I could tone down this really odd looking tree over here in the background on the left hand side. So that's it for this week with the Fujifilm GFX 50R. I had a great time with this camera, I have to say. Really, my purpose with this camera was to get some images that I could blow up really, really large and uh, see if maybe this camera here might be part of my future. And right now, I'm kind of on the edge. I might be able to find a really good used one, maybe even if I wait a little bit longer, maybe under $2,000. But I, you know, honestly, I don't, I don't think I'll purchase this lens. I think I'll just buy a, a 45 and use it handheld quite a bit. And then maybe later on, you know, maybe this lens, um, we'll see. You know, I still would like to get out and do a seascape with this camera. But since it's somebody else's camera, I don't want to have anything happen to it. So we'll just have to see what happens. So that's it for this week with the Fujifilm GFX 50R. And thank you, Fuji, for letting me borrow it for a month. I really had a great time with it. And if you wouldn't mind, please give me a like, a comment, and subscribe to the channel. That would be awesome. And please share the video with your friends. That would also be great. So that's it for this week, and we'll catch you next time.